how do you feel about the idea that you've got a court case going on at the moment to decide whether or not it's actually really legal what's going on now and the Home Office have just literally driven a bus full of asylum seekers into your local area and plonked them there? Well, I think, uh, like most people, we feel un unhappy about it. You know, we're in a situation where it's still going through the court process. At least the Home Office could show some courtesy to the system. We are. Yeah, well, just, OK. And, and you must have been quite... The the driving things through. Yeah, you must have been quite surprised, Dave, no? Were you to learn that on the day of the High Court case, actually, they decided today was the day where these people were going to be moved in, no? No, nothing surprises me about the Home Office and the way how it's treating local residents, not just in Wethersfield, but all the surrounding villages. I think that's what... You know, people say Wethersfield Village. Well, actually, there's Finchinfield Village, there's Sybil Headingham, there's Shalford, there's, there's Badfield. They're all within easy walking distance from the air base. And we've only had one, repeat, one meeting with the Home Office, which mm -hmm. is absolutely appalling. And that was about eight weeks ago. We asked a lot of questions. They said they get back to us with answers. And do you know what? The answers are just... Non-existent. Mm. Not worth a fig. You've had more meetings with the Home Office in court than you have just as courtesy, which I think says a lot about this situation. I would imagine, Dave, you will be worried now that they've done this deliberately and in quite an underhand manner to make it more difficult to actually remove these people. Let's be honest, it's still ongoing through the courts, so you're going to end up, even if you are successful this time, you're going to end up having to have another court case, by which time it's reasonable to expect that this place will be full, which makes it even more difficult to get these people out of there. So, essentially, they've tied your hands behind your back and led you outside and, metaphorically speaking, put a bullet in the back of your head. It's not far from it. They've been really sneaky, even in terms of the way how they brought them in today. There's... They brought them in through another gate, well away from all the media cameras that were there, well away from the journalists, <coughs> and away from residents and other people who were protesting about the whole concept of using such a small village, so, you know, using a base, I should say, so close to such a small mm. village. You know, 1,700 residents. All the villages around here, you know, they're about six, 700. Mm. The ratio is appalling. You know, compare us with Napier, which is what the Home Office often says, their model, you've got about 400 residents next to Folkestone and Hythe with a population of 110,000. Not only that, but the roads around here are really, really bad. Mm. We've had two accidents in this village in the past three weeks, simply because the roads are that bad. The amount of increased traffic... And actually, the risk to the asylum seekers, there's no decent pavement down from the base mm. connecting up with the uh, various villages. Dave. You know, the Home Office hasn't even bothered to put pedestrians in the road leading up to mm. the base. D Dave, we just played a clip earlier on from our Immigration Minister, Robert Jemrick, who said that this, what's happening right now, is good news for the British taxpayer. This is a good story because they're going to stop using the hotel. They're putting them in accommodation that's just about right. It's not luxurious. It's not too expensive. And that basically he's trying to spin it as the taxpayer should be happy about this. You're a taxpayer, Dave. Well, I'm pretty unhappy as are many... In fact, most of the residents of Wethersfield. The reality is that anyway, at the present moment in time, they're spending money on empty hotel rooms. 5,000 rooms are available for them to use. They're paying for them. They're empty. And wh what do you mean about savings? The amount of money they're having to spend on the various facilities around the, around the country. Uh, they're uh. in a situation where, you know, up at Wethersfield, they've chucked out loyal service families with a week's notice and put them into new houses. I'm not saying they don't deserve good accommodation, the military families, but, you know, that's a cost that's there. Mm. And there's many, there's many other costs as well. Mm. The biggest cost is to us. 